Hey Grace Family Church, we are so glad you chose to join us today, whether from across South Africa, Germany, yeah, yeah. <laughs> USA, UK, UAE, Australia, New Zealand, Mauritius, Canada and Portugal, you are all so welcome and yes, that's how far our online campus stretches. So welcome to every single one of you and all those joining us for the first time this morning. My name is Michelle. For those of you joining for the first time today, I'm part of the online team. And with me today is Wes, who is part of the preaching team at Grace. And so great to have you with us here this morning, Wes. It's always good to be here, Michelle. Thank you for having me. It's really awesome. Uh, as you have seen over our Grace Digital pages over the last couple of weeks, we've just had uh, over 40 sticky notes that's been happening. And it's just uh, symbolizing the journey that we've been going through as, as we see uh, that Jesus had fasted and prayed for 40 days in the desert. And for us this time, we just intentionally decided to pause and have a time of reflection where we remember this moment on the uh, of our spiritual growth. And so if you've missed this, won't you check out our Facebook uh, sites and all our social platforms where you can be able to catch up and be able to reflect on those times that we share together. Absolutely. Thank you, Wes. I have just loved how personal the messages on each of the sticky notes have been and will continue to be until we reach the 40th one. And how some feel like a soft whisper from God and others feel like a really loud shout right into our souls. But they all seem to find a landing place just where it's needed as we head for Easter. And um, I pray that that happens for you as you connect with the sticky notes every day. Um, but talking of Easter here um, at Grace in South Africa, we always do a sunrise service on Easter Friday. Yeah, so it's a lot happening in here and, and we're so excited for what's happening. But for us here as Christians, uh, and our Good Friday is normally a day where we stop and we pause and we reflect on the, on the morning and reflection of, of what happened in the process. It is, it's a time that we can remember the great sacrifice that Jesus made for all of us as hum in humanity. It's also a time when we remember the power of God's love and His promise for us for eternal life. So Good Friday is happening and uh, it's also a day of, of hope and new beginnings as we in the anticipation of the Sunday and Easter Sunday and the day that's coming. So it's going to be awesome. So we thought um, it would be so wonderful if you could share your Easter reflection or celebration with us because obviously you can't join us at the Easter Sunday sunrise service but maybe gather a few people on Sunday and have a watch party. That means literally gathering in to watch the, the, the online sermon on Sunday or have a picnic together or just send us a clip or photo of all of you gathered from wherever you are in the world. And maybe on Easter Friday, you could decide to watch the sunrise or go to your favorite place of reflection and send us a, a photo um, and maybe just call it my Good Friday Reflection. We want to be flooded with your photos and video clips so that we can share in our Easter together in a more tangible way on this online space. And so just send it to digital at grace.org.za um, or on the feed and we will accept your, real, your um, photos or your clips and we hope to make it into a reel and share it all with you all over the world in all those countries that I mentioned. Yeah, it's really going to be awesome. Maybe if you take with the hot cross buns and the white Easter eggs, that will be cool as well. But as for today, we're in a series called Between You and Me, which focuses on relationships and we're exploring how we break down walls, fences and barriers to build stronger, more meaningful connection and relationships. And, and today, we have Wayne will be sharing with us. Uh, Wayne will be sharing with us on conflict. And maybe even as I say that word, it's triggering for you. But um, the message is here for you today to encourage you. And I hope it really speaks into your heart. Thank you, Wayne. Years ago in Pretoria, Michelle and I led a marriage course. It was 52 couples gathered over seven weeks. One of them, I think, was celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. Who were we after all? It was like a date night. So dinner, candles, some input from the two of us, followed by chats at each table as people worked out how to do marriage and, and life well. Now, this, this particular week I'm thinking about it was how to deal with conflict, you know, and... Uh, Michelle and I fought on the way to the marriage course uh, uh, to deal with conflict, just to get ourselves warmed up. Now, in our defense, life had been hectic. 
we had lived past each other. We were like ships passing in the night. Um, and, and one of the exercises on this particular evening was that Michelle would raise an unresolved issue of some importance with me and we would model resolving that publicly and in real time. There's a bit of pressure, don't you think? I asked her to give me a heads up uh, as to what she was going to raise and she said no. We were going to do this authentically, she said. So, uh, so the one talking, and I'm going to take a white uh, handkerchief, the one talking would hold the white hanky, and I don't know if you're in that position where you've got to be reminded who's talking and who's not. So anyway, the one with the white hanky is the one talking, and the one listening had the job of simply listening. So Michelle had the white hanky, and this is how it went. Wayne, I feel you're not prioritizing me and the girls. Everything else comes first. You're not present, and when you are physically here in the house with us, you're not here, you're somewhere else. Wow. She passed me the hanky. What I wanted to say was this. I'm busting a gut for this family. We chose to live close to the school so you could have a short commute. I can't pop home anymore for distance and traffic in this godforsaken place called Gauteng. My days are long and stressful and I'm trying to, do all be, to be all things to all people. That's what I wanted to say. But I'm in front of 52 couples wanting to hear what I had to say. So this is what I said. Michelle, I hear you say that I'm not prioritizing you and the girls and that everything else takes first place and that even when I am present, I'm somewhere else. What can I do to make things better? <laughs> the stakes were high. This is our family we're fighting for. Am I right? We were in a new province at the time. The emotions run deep. This is personal. Uh, it, it touches our very being. And our opinions varied because we had different points of view. This, is high, this high stakes, deep feels and varied opinions environment. This is a recipe for conflict and perhaps the most difficult place to resolve conflict. So the stakes are high, but it's hard. You no doubt have found yourself in this charged environment. And perhaps right now, there's a high stakes, high emotion conflict is raging somewhere in your life in a, in a relationship. You know, conflict is inevitable. It's part of our human experience. It, it arises in our families, in our workplaces, in our communities. And believe it or not, even in the church, there is conflict. I love the authenticity of Jesus. At one point, he says this to his friends. <coughs> and I really do love his authenticity. This is Jesus saying, what a generation. No sense of God. No focus to your lives. How many times do I have to go over these things? How much longer do I have to put up with this? <laughs> I love the Jesus who is fully human uh, facing this frustration and conflict in a sense with his friends. Unresolved conflict builds a fence between you and me. And we're about the series of between you and me. And one of the most dangerous places to be is when we downplay the stakes, when we, can I get rid of the tissue? Feel no longer. Keep our opinions to ourselves and we fight no more. Perhaps one of the most dangerous places when the fighting stops. It's called stonewalling and the relationship goes hypothermic, so cold you can't warm it up anymore and you simply don't care anymore. I wonder if you found yourself at one point saying, whatever, I roll, and I can't roll my eyes very well, but whatever, and uh, you no longer care. That's probably the most dangerous place. The relationship is in a, in, a, in a cold, cold place. Or one of the dangerous places, two people turn from each other. They turn away. Uh, the fighting stops, and they both think they are right. The conflict is unresolved in every way. Evil has done its work. The fence grows and the relationship dies. Of course, conflict badly handled <coughs> destroys. And there are two ways to badly deal with conflict. Silence or violence, right? Uh, the animals that would represent these two ways is the rhino, violence, and the hedgehog, silence. I wonder who around you, wherever you're sitting, uh, whether you identify with a rhino, you just charge, stamp on everything. Or you're the hedgehog, you just curl up in a ball 
and you just stay quiet. But man, you're dangerous. <laughs> uh, when you uncool, uh, it's blood everywhere. Michelle and I are two rhinos, really, and, and, and we charge. So uh, we've had to learn how to limit the damage when we're under stress. Now, conflict creatively resolved leads to life. It breaks down the fence, and I'm going to put it down. It leads to richer and deeper and more honest and life-giving relationships. I love Jesus' heart for us. He says, you know, a thief is only there to steal, kill, and destroy. And he talks about evil here, and evil just separates, right? Uh, but he says, I came so that they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. You see, God's original creative intent for us was union, connection, relationship. That's what we're made for. Relationship with God and each other and creation. Sin uh, and, and evil, diabolos, separates, steals, kills and destroys, breaks relationships. And if you want to know what God is about in the world today, He's about putting things together again. Life more and better than we can imagine. You see, conflict is a godly thing. It is a good thing. It is a healthy thing. It's how we deal with the high stakes the high emotion and strong opinion environment. It determines whether you and I resolve things upward or if things spiral downward. Imagine for a moment with me that conflict, the, the one you're thinking of. Imagine it resolved. Imagine you have clarified what you really want. You have clarified what you don't want. You have communicated that. Imagine the relationship restored and even deepened with greater understanding of one another. Imagine you find the win-win rather than the fool's choice of win-lose. Imagine you find honesty and peace rather than silence, uh, just silence for peace's sake, for a false peace. Imagine the time and the energy you would have for other life-giving things when you have resolved the, the things that separate you from the ones you love, the ones you work with, the ones you play with, and the like. Imagine this, the relationship restored as we explore together now ways that can guide us towards resolving conflict, conflict with grace and with compassion. So here's the first step. Make it safe. Make it safe. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if this picture identifies with you. Know, uh, the guy's been smashed into the wall, but please, please be, feel safe enough to, uh, uh, to talk to me and tell me about your feelings. That's a hilarious picture. Establish a safe space for dialogue. Safety means creating an environment where everyone feels respected, where everyone feels valued, where everyone feels free to express their thoughts and feelings without fear of judgment and reprisal. Yes, Paul's life-giving advice. And, and Paul was, I would suggest, a rhino. Man, he had persecuted the Christ followers uh, and he had made an incredible shift. And you find that shift in these words. He says, if it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Make it safe. Now there's grace here. It may not be possible and it doesn't all depend on you because it takes two. But in as much as it does depend on you, make it safe. Live at peace. If you or the other resorts to silence or violence, you know, if you find in the attempt to, to handle this conflict in this high stakes, high emotion, uh, a varied opinion environment, then step out and make it safe. It's, it's called the pause button. Just stop. So for Michelle and I as two rhinos, if we're charging one another, we've almost got to have a safe sign that just says, hey, 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 make it safe. Let's stop the destruction and let's pause for a moment. Make it safe. When we make it safe, we establish a mutual purpose. We want this to work. And we establish mutual respect. I respect you and you respect me. I love the encounter between Bongi, Bongi Mbunambi and Amy barrett Terran, uh, uh, who was a, a female referee at one of our rugby matches here in South Africa. The Sharks were playing. Uh, it was highly charged, high emotion. Uh, they were on a field. And I loved what the referee did. She said, walk with me. So she created the space. She said to him, I respect you and your team have more, you and your team have more experience than me. 
but I ask you to please show me respect. And then she established mutual purpose. We are on the same field. So let's make this work together. I love what she did. I mean, you couldn't find a more highly charged environment, but she created space, the pause, she gave and asked for respect, and she communicated a mutual purpose. We're on the same field. Isn't that a beautiful way of doing things? So rhinos and hedgehogs out there, whatever you are, make it safe to speak and make it safe to hear and watch how your collective energy now instead of charging at each other is used to solve the problem or the challenge. It's, it's a beautiful space. So the first way is to make it safe. The second is to master your stories. You know, conflict often arises from misunderstandings or misinterpretations. We, we construct stories in our minds about others. And I love the recent Lenten uh, reflection, which, which simply said, stop replaying those old stories, right? But we make up stories. We, we decide in our minds uh, what the other person's intentions were, uh, what was the motive for their actions, their, uh, what their motives were based on our perceptions and our biases. These stories that we tell ourselves can conflict and escalate the tension. So in a way, and I'm going to just demonstrate this, we have an interaction and then I walk off the screen. Am I gone? And now I make up a story about you. You can't see me. I can't see you. Hello, here I am. That story I make in isolation doesn't help at all. So instead, we must learn to suspend our judgment and approach conflicts with curiosity and openness. And I love, I love that word curiosity. I, I, I want to understand. So, because by seeking to understand the perspectives of others, we can uncover common ground and we can bridge those divides. So let's say if we have an interaction. Let's say I walk past you in the mall here in, uh, in Durban, South Africa, and I, and I don't greet you. And you go to the other side of the fence and you make up your own story. You decide why I behaved that way, what I meant, what my motive was, that I had something against you, and what the outcome I was after. So I was trying to communicate something that you're out of my life, so I didn't agree to you. So you take offense, offense, and offense. You're on the other side of the fence, and you never, you decide never to greet me again. Also, you will tell whoever will listen that I'm an unfriendly human being and I call myself a pastor after all. Now, can you see the story that you've made? I can't see you on your side of the fence and you no longer see me. There is separation and there is division. <laughs> now, what if you walk the story backwards? And, and this is the story I'm telling myself. Uh, ask the question, this is the story I'm telling myself and why am I telling myself this story? Might there be another explanation other than the story I've made up? Let me be inquisitive and curious and let me ask. Come around from the other side of the fence and uh, say to me, Wayne, you walked right past me in the mall. I felt hurt and I felt rejection, rejected. What if I offered you the respect then? And I said, I'm so sorry. If it's the day I have in mind, my long distance contact lens fell out of my eye and everyone I looked at was a furry, unrecognizable face. And I was heading with great urgency to the optician to get a replacement lens so that I could actually drive home. <laughs> Can you see how that just changes everything, right? Suddenly, I'm a, a kind, loving, but very blind uh, a man, as opposed to an uncaring, unloving, and ungreeting person. So, I don't know. What are the stories you've told them? Master your stories. Walk them back with openness and curiosity. And you may see how life-giving that is. <laughs> it might just liberate you in so many ways. It requires coming out from behind the fence. And asking, walking your story backwards and being curious about whether there's another explanation. I love what James, the brother of Jesus, writes. He says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. 
everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. You know, so here's just a, a simple saying. So don't be so quick to be angry. Be curious, be non-judgmental, and walk your stories backwards. Master your own stories. Take time to understand what's going on in you and around you before leaping to anger. Master your own stories. The third way, you're making it safe, we're mastering your stories. Uh, the third way is to, be, uh, to, to handle these high stakes, high emotional uh, uh, encounters. Practice active listening. Uh, wise King Solomon writes in the Proverbs, to answer before listening, that is folly and it is shame. I mean, there it is, loud and clear. You see, listening is a cornerstone of effective communication. So, yet it is often overlooked in moments of conflict. It's why we had a white servant, you know, because uh, I'm talking, he has the servant, you listen, and you will have the servant, and then you talk and I'll listen. Too often we are quick to speak and we are slow to listen. We are eager to assert our own opinion rather than truly hearing the concerns of others. And I'm a master at that, by the way. I, I want to I answer you, win the argument before you finish speaking. Active listening requires us to set aside our preconceptions, quiet our internal dialogue, and fully engage with the speaker. It means listening not only to words, but also to emotions and underlying needs. I present you with a white hanky, and I invite you to speak. When you don't have to listen, listen to what she says. Listen to what she doesn't. And this is a particular talent. Have you, have you ever been asked the horrifying question, what did I just say now? Whew, I've been in that place where I'm trying to go back in time and wish that I just paid a little more attention. The, the invitation is to listen actively. I must say some of us lack the vocabulary. Listen, uh, listen actively and help us to find the words for what we feel. Sometimes I feel stuff. I don't have the words for it. And, and Michelle helps me find those words. So listen, listen uh, twice as hard uh, as you speak. I think the very uh, shape of our bodies, we have two ears and one mouth. So listen twice as hard as you speak. When we listen, see what happens to our high stakes, high emotion places of conflict. So make it safe. Master your stories. Listen actively uh, and speak with candor and respect is the fourth. When it's our turn to speak, we must do so with honesty and clarity and empathy. Candor means expressing our thoughts and feelings openly and honestly. Now, hedgehogs, you, you just want to close up, right? And you might not feel it safe, but, but here's a chance to speak with openness and with honesty. And while respect entails acknowledging the dignity and worth of every individual, even and especially when we disagree. We must choose our words carefully, avoiding blame, avoiding sarcasm, avoiding hostility, and instead, instead speak from a place of love and understanding. Paul writes to a maturing community in Ephesus and he says, instead of deceit and lies, uh, instead, instead of that, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. So we grow in our relationships, we grow in our connections, we grow in our maturity, and we grow in our love for one another. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So when it's safe, and we have mastered our own stories, and we are actively listening, we get to speak truthfully and with love, and life gets better. And lastly, explore mutual purpose. I love what the referee said to Bongi. We're all on the same field here. We are all in the same boat, to use another analogy. We sink or we swim together. There is mutual benefit for us to solve this conflict. In the midst of conflict, it's easy to lose sight of our shared goals and our values. Yet finding common ground is essential for resolving disputes and building lasting relationships. In, in, in the most high stakes, high emotion environment of divorce, I have found finding mutual purpose helpful for people. What do you want here? 
And, uh, and there are four options for those who, who at one point said we love each other till death us do part, who now wish to part. But there are four options. You can part with hostility and destruction for you and your family. You can stay together destructively and dysfunctionally, constantly beating each other down. Or you can part with the most honoring and respectful way, remembering your story up to now. Or lastly, yes, the you can come together in a new and a life-giving way, remembering what once brought you together and what will perhaps keep you together. And my question is, can, can, you, <coughs> can you agree on what you want here? And most mutually want one of the two positive outcomes. Either stay together creatively or part creatively and, and respectfully. And so agreeing, there is life and there is focus. Here's the beautiful invitation from Paul. He says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the other. This is a call to find mutual, uh, a mutual uh, uh, purpose together. So friends, if there is a fence between you and someone, the stakes are high, emotions are deep, so it's charged, and you have differing opinions, then I pray that you would use these tools we've talked about today and the inspiration and wisdom and love of God for each of us, that I pray that you would break down the fence. Because this is what God is doing. This is what God desires for you. With God's help, you break it down, you fight and you fight well and you fight to the finish. And the outcome is, as Jesus says, man, I've come that you might have abundant and full life, more and better life than you can even imagine. And to give you fuel for the fight, really, I'd invite you to get dressed for the battle. And I'm going to close by reading uh, a, a scripture that is, is one of my favorites. And it goes like this. And as, as I read it, I wonder if you would imagine yourself just getting dressed for the fight and with these beautiful things uh, head into the places of conflict and take down the fence. This is what Paul writes. He says, so chosen by God for this new life of love and, and God chooses to love you and will love you endlessly. Dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Put on compassion and kindness and humility quiet strength and discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place. Be quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and as completely as the Master forgave you. And regardless of whatever else you put on, wear love. It's the basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. With these tools and these God-given Spirit-fueled attributes. Would you take down the fence and see how you inherit an abundant, full, and more life? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you have removed the fence between you and us. You demonstrated your love on the cross of Christ. There is no fence. And you invite us into fellowship and relationship. I pray that we so chosen and loved by you would be a community of conflict resolvers, fence removers. And I pray that for every relationship that has come to mind even today, that you would help us, that you would help us remove the fence, use the tools we've run around today and see what you will do because you are about mending fences and bringing us all together. So for every family, for every relationship now, I pray, Spirit of God, would you do your work in us and would you do your work through us? In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week. Thank you so much, Wayne, for giving us some very real tools to deal with conflict. 
like having a help me understand mindset and heart. And I'm going to light this candle now and um, as a symbol of one of the ways we can deal with conflict. Do you want to talk us through that, Wes? Yeah, I think we, we can recognize and through Wayne's message, we can recognize that in, in this life that we get to call and we lived in, uh, we are going to face conflict in some way or the other. And us being able to deal with that is very helpful and to find good tools would be very healthy in how we navigate that. But sometimes we may feel scared and we may feel insecure and maybe a safe space in that is for you to go and, and light a candle and take a moment to reflect and, and think things through clearly and ask God, God, what is it that you want me to do or what do you want me to say or how do you want me to react in the moment to be able to deal with conflict well. So um, won't you do that in your, in your own time, in your own space, whenever you're facing something, uh, just take a moment to pause and reflect and maybe light a candle and it will help you find a safe space in in dealing with conflict or not. And absolutely, and if, if you need to deal with conflict with someone else, just to light a candle as a sign that this is a safe space for a conflicting discussion to take place. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're we gonna continue with our, our giving and our worship. Uh, and, and if you haven't had a chance to watch the Tithing Sermon in our Grounded series, here are some things that you can reflect on as, we, as you get the opportunity right now in the service to give. Giving is less about money and it's more about discipleship. And the purpose of giving is not about to fund the mission of our church and to do our own things, but it is to, to find a purpose to help people encounter God through their generosity. And so there will be different codes that will come up in, through the bottom, so you can scan that and you'll be able to give in different methods. But for those of you who are overseas and we're struggling to, to give, we've actually created a PayPal account and there'll be a link below in, in the chat section so you can be able to uh, guide your giving through that in that manner. And so uh, won't you be able to open up your hearts to see what God does to you through your giving and your generosity. Thanks, Wish. Shall we pray? Father God, as we encounter you in so many beautiful ways in our day, just watching the sunrise, watching the sunset, just looking at, the na at nature, its beauty, just the wonder of how our bodies work, the fact that we can fall in love, we can have children, we can experience life in its fullness. We encounter a real and living God. And so just as an act of thankfulness for your generosity and realizing that everything we have comes from you, we just want to give back to you. And so help us um, give with generous hearts as an act of worship. And I pray, Father God, that what is given that you would use to further your kingdom to reach people who don't know you as Lord and Saviour, so that their encounter with you can be beautiful and glorious. And most of all, that in this process, you are glorified as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name, Amen. As a continued um, act of worship from giving, we're just going to go into a time of worship continued as we listen to the worship song together.
I don't know about you, but I really like those times where we can sing and worship together. It's really uh, a time where we can just collectively just sing praises to God. And I hope that 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 really spoke to you and challenged your heart in whatever you were singing and worshiping God. Thanks, Wes. And uh, to our online community, all of you, whenever you decide to watch this, we're going to ask you to do something this week. Why don't you just click that share button and share this message with someone who you know would benefit from this would help them heal and just do life better because that's what we're really all about is, is pulling God into our lives in a very real way and sharing Him with the rest of the world. So have a beautiful week and thank you for joining us today. Now I've done